So we are going to do the 2017 AMC 12B problem 20. Real numbers x and y are chosen independently and uniformly from the interval 0, 1. What is the probability that the floor of log 2 of x equals the floor of log 2 of y? And in this case, the floor function is talking about the greatest integer less than or equal to this number. So for example, the floor of negative 0.3 would equal negative 1, because negative 1 is the next smaller integer. Now, in this case, it helps to start out by thinking about what these log base 2 functions are that we're dealing with. So if we take a look at the graph, and remember in this case, x and y are going from 0 to 1, which means this log is going to be negative. It's going to go from negative infinity all the way up to 0 at the point x equals 1, or y equals 1. So if we think about the floor function of this graph, we could use a different color in this case. If, for example, this point right here is 1 half, log base 2 of 1 half will be negative 1. So in this whole interval, the floor function would equal negative 1. And then all the way up until a quarter, the floor function would equal negative 2, because log base 2 of a fourth is negative 2. And then we would get a smaller interval for negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and then it would keep going down to infinity with these really, really small intervals. So what we really need to do is add up the probability that these two functions each equal negative 1, or each equal negative 2, and so on. So really, we're going to be looking at a summation. And we could think about the sum from, say, n equals 1 to infinity, because we're starting from negative 1 and then going down. The probability first that the floor of log base 2 of x equals negative n, so for example, that it equals negative 1. And then we'd have to multiply by the probability that the floor of log base 2 of y also equals negative n. Remember, if we want two events to happen at the same time, and they are independent, then we multiply the probabilities that each one of them is true. And that gets the probability that they're both true. So if we can figure out the probability that log base 2 of x equals negative n, and the probability that log base 2 of y equals negative n, then we can plug those in. However, remember that x and y are pretty much the same thing. They're both chosen independently and uniformly. So even though they could be different numbers, they're following the same process. So if they're independent, the probability that this statement is true for x is the same as the probability that this statement is true for y. So really, we could write this as the probability that the floor of log base 2 of x equals negative n, and then squared. So all we need to do now is figure out this probability for any integer n. To do this, it might help to start out by picking a particular value for n. So say we let n equal 1, then we want the probability that the floor of log base 2 of x equals negative 1. Well, based on what we know about the floor function, if we want this statement to be true, we also know that the value for log base 2 of x can be anywhere from negative 1 up to 0 because in this whole range, the floor function is exactly equal to negative 1. So we can rewrite this statement as saying that log base 2 of x must be less than 0, but greater than or equal to negative 1. So any value in this range will give us that the floor is exactly negative 1. Now if we want to solve for x, we can take 2 to the power of everything in this inequality because that will cancel out with a log. So we get that 2 to the negative 1, which is 1 half, is less than or equal to x, is less than 2 to the 0, which is 1. And this is a very useful statement, because we know x and y are chosen independently and uniformly, meaning the probability that x equals any particular value in the range from 0 to 1 is always the same. So if we want the probability that x is between a half and one, all we need is to figure out the length of that interval 
from a half to one, which means that the probability is equal to one half in this case. Now all we have to do is take this logic and extend it to any specific value of n. So let's repeat this exact same thing, but if we switch negative one with negative n. In order for this to work now, the log base two of x has to be between negative n and negative n plus one, because as soon as it's negative n plus one, then the floor will be different. So now if we take two to the power of everything, we're gonna get two to the negative n over here, and then two to the negative n plus one on the other side. Now we wanna figure out the length of this interval. Well, the length of this interval is gonna be the bigger number minus the smaller number. So we take two to the negative n plus one, and then minus two to the negative n. We can factor out two to the negative n from everything, and that gets us two from this first term, and then minus one from the second term. Two minus one is one, so our answer is just two to the negative n, which means the probability that the floor of log base two of x equals negative n is always two to the power of negative n. So let's write that in our equation here. We're looking for the sum from n equals one to infinity of two to the negative n and then squared. Now let's take this two to the negative n and turn it into one half to the power of n because that will be a little easier to work with. Notice now we have one half to the n squared. We can bring this two inside the power so we get one half to the power of two times n. And now we can do one more thing, which is if we take the n all the way out, we have one half squared on the inside and then to the n. One half squared we know is equal to one quarter. So this is actually what we need to figure out. The sum from n equals one to infinity of one quarter to the power of n. We know the sum for a geometric series is going to be a over one minus r, where a is the first term and r is the common ratio. So in this case, this summation is going to equal, the first term is gonna be one fourth to the power of one if we plug in n equals one. So we'll get one quarter divided by one minus, and then the common ratio is also one quarter. So this gives us one fourth over three fourths, which means our final result is one third. So this probability is indeed one third. So when we're doing this kind of problem solving, where we've looked at the problem statement a little bit, we've done some graphs and figured out what summation we need, sometimes it helps if we're trying to calculate something a little weird like this to look at a specific case. If we just look at n equals one, for example, that often gives us some information about what process we need to apply for the more complicated general case so we can get to our answer just like this.